If you think The Shine is all about the baby face, we're about to choke slam that mistaken notion next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. Right here on my channel, I make videos for fellow professional wrestlers at every single stage of their career. And I do this because when I was just starting out, I didn't have a mentor to guide me, nor did I have a coach to teach me. And I really do believe that lack of access to veteran wisdom, veteran knowledge, veteran experience played a significant role in my failure to achieve my ultimate career goal. And I don't want the same thing to happen to you. That's why Till We Make It is here. And the continuation of this channel, all the videos that you find here are thanks to my amazing patrons. If you've not yet taken a look at my Patreon, recently I've started making some of the posts which are typically exclusive just for my patrons public so everyone can see them. If you want a glimpse into the type of material I'm producing all the time just for my patrons, this is a great time to go scrolling through my Patreon and explore it for yourself. And if learning as much as you possibly can about professional wrestling is paramount to you, joining my Patreon is a no-brainer. Important context about where today's video is headed. I believe that everything pertaining to a pro wrestling match can be divided up into one of three categories, and they are the mechanics, the performance, and the structure. And today's video is firmly about the last of those. It's about structure. Most wrestling matches crafted outside of Japan use three-act structure, an ancient storytelling form that dates all the way back to Greek morality plays thousands of years ago. And in wrestling, act one of that three-act structure is referred to as the shine, the open, or the promise. Now, at a beginner or introductory level, it's often believed that Act 1 is all about shining out the babyface's values. It's about getting the babyface character over, but that's a simplistic view of that act of the structure. It's oversimplified. So today, let's really break open the function of Act 1, and to help us along, we're going to swap out the most common term for Act 1, the shine, and supplant it with the promise. And to help out here, I'm going to draw on some examples of promises done well, both in the world of professional wrestling and borrowed from the world at large as well. Important. Act 1 of a pro wrestling match does not begin with the sound of the opening bell. It actually begins the moment the audience can see a wrestler on stage. So that means the entrances are part of Act 1. The moment the demon slinks out onto the stage, the promise has begun. You have the opportunity from the moment the audience can set eyes on you to convey emotion, value, characteristics to them, to inform the storytelling. In fact, a lot of the heavy lifting of the promise can be accomplished before the opening bell. If a deep dive into pro wrestling structure is brand new to you today, I don't doubt you might be hearing some of this vocabulary for the very first time. You might be thinking, Mike, why is Act 1 sometimes referred to as the promise? And it is for this reason. In Act 1, we make a promise to the audience as wrestlers. This is who and what I am, and I will remain this thing until the performance is over. In Act 1, in The Promise, I will shine out any essential character traits or values, proving I am who and what I purport to be. And then I will spend the balance of the match fulfilling that promise. And that isn't just true of the babyface or protagonist in a story, it's also true of the heel, the villain, the antagonist, as much in wrestling as in other storytelling forms. Here's Rey Mysterio making an entrance. What does this communicate to us? It tells us he's a high-flying daredevil. This wrestler is explosive. This wrestler isn't afraid to take risks. 
and all of these essential character values are communicated to us quickly and effectively just through the entrance. The opening bell hasn't sounded yet, and yet we know a lot about the kind of wrestler Rey Mysterio promises to be. Okay, now let's compare that perfectly executed entrance to this one. What does this entrance communicate to us? Well, not a lot. Maybe Ray is nervous? This doesn't do much to establish his essential character traits or to foreshadow the type of match he's about to have. The WWE produced entrance is a textbook example of the promise of Act One, whereas this second example is a bit of a dud. Are you learning something from today's video? Then please leave a like a palooza. And if you have not yet joined the Till We Make It tribe, now is a fine time to do so. Go ahead, click down below, and also ring that notification bell. For some reason, YouTube thinks that's very important. Thank you very much. In that well-produced Rey Mysterio entrance, we have a great example of the promise done right. But now let's take a step outside of the world of pro wrestling and look at this same concept applied in a movie. And to do so, I'm going to reference the best Batman movie ever made, The Dark Knight Rises. And yeah, I'll fight you about it. In The Dark Knight Rises, a juicy chunk of Act One of The Promise is carved out specifically to develop the heel of the piece, Bane. And what does it convey to us about Bane? Well, for one, he's smart, he's calculating. His plan is to be captured by the CIA, handcuffed by them, and even taken up into the air aboard their plane. And he is strong enough to break free of these handcuffs and fight armed agents unflinchingly. He's also ruthless. He will sacrifice some of his own team in order to accomplish his goals. So by the time this part of the movie is over, this chunk of the promise, we know that the villain of the piece is smart, calculating, strong, and ruthless. We have all the information we need to know to understand who Bane is in the context of this movie. A relative beginner might pop on their wrestling goggles, watch this scene from The Dark Knight Rises, and ask, why is time being dedicated to the heel, the villain, during Act One? Isn't Act one, supposed to be the time when the babyface, the hero character, shines their values out to the audience. And like I said at the top of this video, that is an oversimplification. During The Promise, during Act One, we must firmly establish who and what both the face and the heel are to the audience. And then, through the balance of the performance, Acts Two and Three, we fulfill that promise to the audience by remaining true to the characters that we have established on stage. And that's true for the face and for the heel. In fact, just this morning I was watching a match where more time is dedicated to establishing the heel's values in front of the audience than the face. And uh, stick around and I'm gonna link you to that exact match at the end of today's video. Another example that's easy to wrap your head around is the entrance of The Undertaker. And this is accomplished by using lighting effects, sometimes there's fog, a great music choice. All of this creates a very eerie presentation. What does this tell us about the character? It feels ominous. There's a slow, almost robotic method by which The Undertaker walks to the ring. It is a little bit inhuman. You can almost infer from the way The Undertaker stalks to the ring like a movie monster that this is how that wrestler will stalk their prey once the match actually begins. Combined, all of these elements create an otherworldly aura around The Undertaker before the opening bell has even sounded. Then, because so much of that work is already done, once the wrestling begins, all The Undertaker has to do is fulfill the promise of Act One right on through the finish of the match and any crazy post-match shenanigans that happen to follow. Can we just pause for a second and talk about The Undertaker summoning lightning? Because that does happen from time to time. How often can he do this? Why doesn't he do it more often? Discuss down below in the comments, please and thank you. In both the example of The Undertaker and Rey Mysterio, 
a lot of the work of the promise is done during their entrances, and of course, they are helped along by the incredibly high production values the WWE heaps on getting those characters across to the viewer. Rey Mysterio could have never had that effective of an entrance during his days with ECW in the mid-90s, because ECW could not hope to rival the production values of modern-day WWE. You would not have seen WrestleMania-level production in service of The Undertaker's entrance if you went to see a WWE house show in the summer of 2005. It just wasn't possible under those conditions. The reason, though, that I am choosing The Undertaker and Rey Mysterio is because these are textbook examples of the promise being done well. And they are clear, even though they are top shelf, high production, big budget examples. Well, what if you don't have WWE production values to help you get your character traits across during act one? What if your character's values really can't be effectively conveyed during the entrance whatsoever? Like, for example, your character's value is supreme technical wrestling skill. That might best be demonstrated after the opening bell sounds. What if your character's main value is speed? Well, that's a value that might best be communicated once the wrestling has actually begun. It doesn't need to be front-loaded into your entrance. And in some cases, it cannot be. It just needs to be established to the audience before the beginning of Act 2. You have the entirety of Act 1 of The Promise to establish everything the audience needs to know about who or what your character is in the context of this match. When we don't know what a character brings to the table, it's hard to get invested. It doesn't matter if this is a character we see in the squared circle, or it's a character that we see in comic books, or video games, or in a movie. When the character's values are either underdeveloped or just are unclear, it's unlikely that the audience will make an investment, and the character could be said to be flat. Flat characters do not grab audiences and hold their attention. And if you are struggling to get that deeper emotional investment in Acts 2 and 3 of your matches, it may be because the values that you need to shine out during The Promise during Act 1 are either underdeveloped or they are unclear. I think if you make it to Act 2 of a pro wrestling match without establishing any kind of character values, like I'm a spooky, ominous movie monster that stalks its prey, or I am the fastest wrestler on the roster, you don't have a hook to pull the audience through the rest of the story. You have to front load all of that into Act 1, and that goes for the face as well as for the heel. If you are a heel whose main value is you are narcissistic, well, that's got to be established during the promise. If you are a heel and your character is impervious to chops, that's got to be firmly established in the mind of the audience before Act 2 begins. Can you think of a professional wrestler, past or present, who does an excellent job of front-loading all the essential character values into the promise? Drop it down below in the comments for me right now. It's important to remember that whatever characteristics or values you establish during the promise of Act 1, that they are maintained or explored throughout the balance of the match. So what does that mean? Well, if you are maintaining the characteristic, for example, you are a powerhouse babyface wrestler. We need to see some amazing feat of strength during Act 1, but that strength, that power, has to inform all the other wrestling choices that you make in terms of selecting your mechanics, your moves, throughout the balance of the match. Suddenly, in Act 3, the powerhouse doesn't become an acrobat. You can also explore certain characteristics and values. So, if you are a heel that loves to pause and insult the audience during your entrance, you could explore that by bringing it back in Act 3. A heel being haunted by pausing too long and getting distracted to play with the crowd, blowing up in their face, makes for strong storytelling. You are exploring that idea later in the performance after you establish it during Act 1. 
I found an example of an awful first act. It's got lame entrances and terrible opening spots, but I will not embarrass myself by showing you one of my own matches. Suffice to say, you can absolutely fail at the work of Act 1. And if you are designing the opening of your matches only with a mind for this is a move I like or this is a favorite spot of mine, I want to encourage you to bring more attention and focus to the structural function of Act 1 within three-act structure. I want to challenge you to be a better storyteller. If you get to the end of Act 1 and you haven't established anything, you haven't promised anything to the audience, I think your match will fail to get over. And yes, it's important to show emotion, be expressive, maybe even start to establish a character ritual in front of the audience. But the essential function of Act 1, the promise, the shine, or the open, is to let the audience know what the character traits and values of both the face and the heel are, and to communicate them clearly so they can enjoy the rest of your performance. When the contents of Acts 2 and 3 fulfill the promise of Act 1, like they do in all the best Undertaker matches and all the best Rey Mysterio matches, it creates a total package in the mind of the viewer which is coherent. It is memorable. It gets over. And so fulfilling the promise of Act 1 often proves to be the difference between delivering a satisfying experience to the viewer and being forgotten. If these elements of professional wrestling excite your imagination the way they excite mine, then crack open my Seven Keys to Becoming a Better Performer, a book I wrote all about structure and performance. It's over on Amazon and on Audible as an audiobook. And here's the match I alluded to earlier, in which a whole lot of time is spent establishing the value of the heel as if it weren't self-evident already.